We're going to talk about resilience against compassion fatigue. And this is a, a very important subject for us who work as service providers. Now, compassion fatigue, as you all know, is an, an expected side effect of the work we do as psychological service providers. It is expected. So let's look beneath the surface and go into it and explore the power beneath the symptom. The symptom always tells us something significant. So this summer I experienced compassion fatigue. And what did I do? I took out, I, I went on a sabbatical and I took out my watercolor paintings. I started to paint and this is what I have found. Maybe you will relate to this uh, experience, but let's explore it. I found that fatigue is the indication of a need for renewal and resilience is the resulting renewal built through the creative process. Resilience is the resulting renewal built through the creative process because the fatigue indicated a need for this renewal. Now this is what I found during my recovery process. Looking after my body and mind is not enough. Recreation, a supportive family and friends are not enough to keep compassion fatigue at bay. Nurturing myself with exercise, having hobbies and interests are not enough. Meditation and mindfulness are not enough. Knowledge is not enough. Holidays, fun, therapy is not enough. A healthy worldview and an awareness of my personal qualities are not enough. A sense of purpose, positive beliefs in my abilities, social networking, embracing change, work within the present, uh, presented reality, optimism, self-compassion, problem-solving skills, goal-oriented attitude, being productive and taking action, mm. developing skills, detachment from negativity, fearlessness, fearing less, and self-worth is not enough. So what was the answer? As you would not have expected, it is creativity. And I want to explore this concept with you today. What is creativity and how do we find it? We need to have a sharp and deep observation of our own inner psyche and the world around us. And then we need to verify what our findings are what we found in terms of uh, our discoveries about our internal world. And then we need to integrate and embody the insights that we gained and take action in our new, new expression of um, how we're going to act in the future after this um, creative exploration with new insights. The words of Cairon Legris rang true for me in my search for meaning beyond conventional wisdom. He says, considering the major forces in psychology, each has its merits, and the diversity of psychologies in our time is surely testimony of the complexity of the psyche itself. No one theory can do justice to the totality of the psyche. And you can read more about Chiron Legris um, in his book, Archetypal Reflections, Insights and Ideas from Jungian Psychology. So what I thought we'll do, we'll go to explore a couple of schools of thought that talks about the creative process and healing. And 
we find lots of work in the neurosciences, the depth psychology, philosophy, theology, Eastern philosophy, the arts, physics, and so forth. But, you know, in physics they start to talk about creativity is considered as a learning methodology, implying that students work as co-authors in the development of learning context and in the design and solution of problems. So creativity becomes really important in those areas. So what we're going to do, this is our agenda. We're going to talk about the experience of compassion fatigue in terms of four worldviews. The first one will be neuroscience, depth psychology, Eastern philosophy, and Western mysticism. We're going to expand our horizon a bit. And that uh, insights that these different worldviews will give us will give birth to new ideas and insights about the creative process and the integration and embodying of the insights that we get. Then we're going to use some examples of how to do it and we are going to take action from there. So here we go, neuroscience. Dr. Dan Siegel is a well-known neuroscientist who talks about the brain and uh, the behavior around creativity, which is the main factor in change and healing. He has written numerous books on the subject and we all know his work. Um, the other person that I admire a lot is Dr. Ernest Rossi. Um, he is quite a pioneer in the field of combining neuroscience, psychology, uh, the, the unconscious, because he's a clinical psychologist who wrote numerous books on dreams and hypnosis, psychotherapy, the psychobiology of the mind-body healing. He's also a Jungian analyst and he was an editor of Psychological Perspective, an international journal of Jungian thought. He's also the editor of Milton Erickson's collective papers. Um, Milton Erickson was a pioneer in the hypnotherapy department. Teachers, he's a teacher of innovative approaches to hypnotherapy and mind-body healing on an international level. I've met him at a conference in Germany and learned profound new skills around how to use the unconscious in the healing process. He's got a private practice in Malibu, California. He's a molecular biologist, a mathematician. And in his latest book, The Breakout Heuristic, he talks about the new neuroscience of mirror neurons, consciousness, and creativity in human relationships. This is a profound book um, which contains all his research through the ages. He writes, an individual who is stuck in a particular mood, I would add a pattern, personality characteristic, or style of behavior, would be one who was in some way blocked in his or her cyclic process of phenomenological growth. Now, what does that mean? This is a curious idea that he gives us here. Rossi says further, as we explore his concepts, that the, crea the creative or self-actualizing individual, however, is one who has found a way of cooperating with the cyclic process so that he or she is continually changing as a function of phenomenological development. And I suspect that this cyclical process is one of burnout and through creativity reinvent yourself. According to Rossi, the therapist needs to do the same work as the client through creative exploration in the sense of an inner adventure or journey, a finding of one's inner feelings, 
hopes and unique style of life. And the therapist's approach in the breakout stage of therapy or the illumination or the insightful stage can be nothing less than that of the creative artist. And he quotes Otto Rank. The art is to find the appropriate vehicle that will permit a flow of self-expression that leads to the new insight which transform into the transformation and the action that changes the brain elasticity for the new beliefs and behavior. This is profound. Let me tell you, we're going to go to the depth psychology area. Clarissa Pinkola Estes, you all know this woman. She's a wonderful American poet, psychoanalyst and post-trauma specialist who was raised in the oral and ethnic traditions. She runs the Institute for Archetypal and Cross-Cultural Studies in Loveland, Colorado. She wrote the book, Women Who Run With the Wolves, where she explores mythologies with a great sensitivity and insight. She expresses how essential it is that the psyche go into the creative process to grow and heal. She says, the doors to the world of the wild self are few but precious. And of course, the wild self is the creative self, the child self. If you have deep scar, that is the door. If you have an old, old story, that is the door. You have to go into the, the pain, into the scars, into the subconscious, into the shadow. If you love the sky and the water so much, you almost cannot bear it. That is the door. If you yearn for a deeper life, a full life, a sane life, that is the door. She explains that any burnout symptoms are indications of deep, of being particularly or completely severed from the relationship with the deep instinctual psyche. And the only way back to health and healing is through the creative process. This, my friends, is why all the other efforts and strategies are just supportive and it's maintenance uh, strategies. It's not true healing strategies. Art as meditation in any form, the imagination expresses itself, is the bridge between the body and the soul. She's doing courses in mark making where she uses body maps to explore your psyche. She calls this task art as a sacred act where you learn to literally map your own psyche. So it's a projection of your body onto paper, but you actually reflect on your internal side through this method. And I have found an artist who use almost an exact process to grow self-awareness through a creative process called soul art, where the body mapping leads to insight transformation and soul action. So of course, Janie has to uh, um, learn about this and know about this because I keep on exploring new avenues. Let's look at Eastern philosophy. It is said that the true path of development is to first imitate and follow the master teaching or teacher. Then we move on to fluently master the learning ourselves. It is through practice and experience that we become fluent in mastering skills in completely new and creative ways. So we have to take things further from where we've started. The Aikido master teacher, Endo Shishiro, talks about the Shihari creative development of skills. She is the first step in the process where repetitive imitation and memorization to acquire the formulas and methods is the, the step. And 
We all know about this step. This is what most of us do when we learn new skills. The second step in this evolution is HA, the HA process. This is where we make adjustments. We branch out because of the understanding of the underlying principles and the theories behind the technique. Processes become completely integrated within our being. And this is where the neuroscience talk about muscle memory and embodiment. Uh, it becomes second nature to apply these skills and, and formulas and methods because the underlying principles is has become part of you. The last part of this process is the re-phase. Now this is the creative stage in the technique or, or the creative technique. This is where we depart completely from the formulations without stepping or overstepping the laws and principles. Re literally means to leave, to go beyond or to transcend. This means you finally transcend the obvious by connecting the dots and seeing the unseeable, tapping into your supreme, absolute, limitless depth of creativity. This is what neuroscience call the superconscious. This is where people invent, create new paths, new understandings, and it is where we lack. We have not learned to allow ourselves to go into the re-phase of our development as a, um, as a school of thought, as a method of healing. Resilience is all about self-development and self-development is all about creative thinking. So the question that I want to ask you today and myself is how do we allow the evolution of the process of mastery to unfold internally through creativity and how can we adapt to external our external work to match our internal growth how do we be creative and express our external creative development essential creative uh, how can we create, be creative and express our essential creative yeah. development without leaving the boundaries of our professional requirements? A lot to think about. And I think burnout happens when we get stuck in one of these phases. Let's look at Western mysticism. Now there I found a guy called Matthew Fox who is a spiritual theologian he was, he's a priest, but he is an activist for gender justice and eco justice. He has, I think, left the church or the church has banned him because of his uh, controversial thought. And um, he talks about creation spirituality, where he promotes creativity as one of the parts of the self-development and healing process, as well as uh, healing of the environment and social injustice and it all happens through creativity he has studied um, numerous mystics and um, have found that they talk about um, creativity as one of the essential elements in understanding life and moving forward evolving beyond dogma so Matthew has written 37 books and ha uh, which has been translated into languages over 70 times and um, he has a new vision uh, which he I think I did uh, mention that he calls it creative spirituality of pedagogy rituals activism and um, honing honoring the sacred earth by accepting all faiths and cultures, working with creative forces of the masculine and the feminine. Now this has got nothing to do with sexuality or sexes. 
it has to do with um, the Jungian concept of the the active and the non-active, or the uh, rational and the non uh, uh, the um, uh, non-verbal abilities. Now he feels that the feminine, the unconscious, the earth, the uh, uh, connection to nature, um, uh, the insight, the su the subtle instincts and so on was suppressed for too long in our patriarchal society. He talks about creativity as the path to transformation from the state of the dark night of the soul to the state of joy of living. And he wrote, we find God in the via creativa. In acting creatively, we co-create with God. In our imaginative output, we trust our images through enough to birth them and ride them into existence. Wow, that's a mouthful too, that we can actually co-create co our reality by, through creativity. And um, that is all about evolution and uh, evolving continually learning and going beyond uh, well-known patterns without lo losing the principles on, uh, of what we, the, under, the, the core principles of life. So he warns about institutions like churches, academia and government institutions that turns into cults who spreads dogma and f therefore they are dead in their contribution to society because they promote repetition through control. And there is no creative activities which generates new insights and understandings or inventive solutions to present time human problems. I want to emphasize this because we can recognize this concept very easily in, our, in today's life in organizations and it's important that we move forward and ne not get stuck. So there's a, a whole lot of modern day researchers of science and spir spirituality and you can look them up. Um, these guys have all got new ideas uh, which needs to be explored further but they are pioneers in being brave enough to venture uh, further from um, the known and the accepted. Projection is needed for the rational mind to reflect upon the, the um, uh, to access unconscious material. So we need something to project onto. We need something to reflect with. And because that's how consciousness work. We um, it's very hard for us to see ourselves, so we have to look in a mirror. And there are a couple of ways that we can stimulate this um, creative process. Uh, this uh, creative process happens through this projective um, um, exercise. So projection can happen by project, projecting marks or drawings either concrete as in body maps or in abstract symbols that reflects your feelings another form of projection is to identify with an external image that represents an archetypal essence present in the unconscious at a particular moment this is a method I created and designed as a tool for awareness in my little product, the Mirrors, Mirrors to Your Soul package. But we'll go into that later. Creative expressions and rational understandings, insights, originate from the union of both the conscious and the unconscious content through projections. Now, um, we forget that you know, we want to solve everything just from the uh, rational mind and, and then uh, we use willpower and force to uh, try and force ourselves through life. But we are not operating as a whole person in that instance. We need to 
listen to our unconscious guidance. And the unconscious holds also the the vulnerabilities, the shadows, the uh, the, the conditioning and the pains and the wounds that w that is the the essence or, or the source of how we're going to move th uh, forward through them to find our gifts and our true uh, talents. True talents always comes from uh, wounds. In turn, these expressions are embodied, which transforms the consciousness and the action of the person. Now, the you know it, that this is where the um, co-creation comes in. Now, both the conscious and the unconscious material is necessary to produce the healing function, as we've said. So, we have done the f the four stories or the four. <coughs> The four world, <coughs> the four world views, and now we're going to go into examples. As we have said, that the pathways to creativity can be from the internal to the external, projecting um, onto paper and looking at the paper to see what's happening inside, and this is what we do in body mapping. So. Uh, we draw a whole body on paper, your complete body, and then you start to make notes on the paper about different sensations, the different feelings, and you start to create whatever comes to you. You start to color it in, draw, whatever, until you have a complete picture. Now, this, this uh, exercise was about my, uh, my summer transformation and there's lots of this is Janie 4.0 that I created <laughs> but uh, when you look at most people they it, they everybody is totally unique so here is a person this is a man who is very aware of energy and so there's he's not uh, um, very concrete so it's all about electricity flowing through his body his sensations it's a very powerful and unique um, drawing um, which made him aware of uh, certain uh, facts in himself this is another version of a body map and another worse version of a body map and then um, the last one is a is a woman who um, uh, found that uh, there's a hole in her in her center because of uh, sexual abuse experiences as a child. Now later she turned this into a gift where she said that she found how to be compassionate towards children and she became uh, a, a teacher of small children with learning disabilities and she is an amazing person who works, um, who really have uh, understanding for children. Now the other pathway is the external to the internal. And this is where we look at something uh, that we did not produce, but it gives us information about, uh, about ourselves on an archetypal level. And I want to uh, quote Carl Gustav Jung's work here, and he says, Our personal psychology is just a thin skin, a ripple in the ocean of collective psychology. The archetypes are the great decisive forces. They, and not our personal reasoning and practical intelligence, bring about the real events. The archetypal images decide the fate of man. This, this is a huge concept that needs exploration if you're not familiar with it. But um, what I found in my personal research and my phenomenological experiences is that that is absolutely true. We go through 
phases of archetypal learning um, which we complete systematically before we go to a next um, challenge and these are natural processes just like our um, physical evolution throughout life we have these uh, emotional psychological sp spiritual whatever you want to call it uh, evolutions that uh, challenges us to uh, mature on those levels too so I've designed this a little uh, tool and I want us to just play a game. I want us to um, be spontaneous and don't censor yourself. Just relax, take a deep breath and play with me here. When you look at the following images, there's nine images. I want you to scan them and to stop with the one and focus on the one that resonates with you at this moment. And uh, there might be others that speak to you, but I want you to find one that is the most powerful at this moment. At other times you will find others to be important, but we want to focus on this particular moment in your life and the image has to resonate with you from a heart place, from a non-verbal, non-intellectual, just the energy of the card, just the energy of the, the, the image. And here they are. <coughs> so take a moment to go through them. And there you have a choice. So I'm going to give you numbers that matches the, the particular image that you resonated with. And keep that number in mind. So I'm going to go through each one and we're going to explore how creativity will work for you. This is just a game. So everybody who chose number one card, number one uh, image, um, you, your fear is that you will be wrong, that you will do something wrong, say something wrong, not uh, do something right, be judged for it, and your creativity lies in becoming spontaneous, to break through that uh, harsh um, uh, expectations of yourself and um, be spontaneous. So instead of being wrong, you'll start to verbalize and start to express and start to be yourself spontaneously. Dare to be spontaneous. Uh, the second image represents the archetype of somebody who really wants to be loved and wants to love everybody else. So you tune into other people's needs and you serve their needs forgetting about yourself. This is the tendency of this archetype. So the burnout can happen really easy for this one because of the incredible compassion and insight about other people's needs. Very um, important thing to find creativity in self-development and uh, as a balance between giving and receiving in your service and taking care of your own needs. The third image is the archetype, represents the archetype uh, that wants to be successful and is striving for success. But the fear behind the striving of productivity and success is failure. So the important creative part here is to find 
joy and beauty in the productive in your productivity just focus on the joy and the beauty instead of failure and success that's where you will find your creativity and for the the image number four represents the archetype of uh, the guide or champion and this person takes a lot of responsibility on their shoulders want to save the world with their compassion and they become carriers of other people's pain um, trying to save them not to serve them but to save them and they are usually very good with systems and creating of systems and organization and, and so on. They are really very practical. But for you, the, the creativity is in designing systems and also learning not to be a porter but to guide. Uh, the archetype of number five uh, is the one who really needs purpose and meaning is the fear here is that there's no reason no meaning in life no purpose and they constantly strive to understand things uh, deeper and on deeper and deeper levels so the, this is the scientists and the observers and the researchers and the teachers and for you the 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 creative act is to go is to keep on exploring with confidence and to also be prepared to share your knowledge because in a creative way because the scientists can be very um, possessive of their knowledge and not wanting to share it until there's like a real confirmation and which is rarely the case. Now the, the this uh, number six archetype represents the skeptic, but also the loyalist. So these are people who really want to bring groups together, bring people together, commit to connections, and this is their power, their their talent. But then there's always the skepticism. So. Uh, uh, not trusting very much how others will commit they they long for commitment but they don't believe that it is possible so the creative process here is to build bridges and to commit um, to those groups uh, that you um, support and those uh, relationships and um, partnerships that you connect with. The archetype number seven really fears um, the confinement or uh, limitations and they have to learn to, so they keep on uh, looking for stimulation more and more and more and they want to know more and more and more. Um, so for them it's really important to focus oh. Uh, with on their creative vision and to see one thing through now to still the mind the creative process here is to still the mind and to be willing to um, go with uh, with a pure focus uh, this uh, archetype number eight the fear is to be weak and or to be harmed and to be controlled so they start to become very powerful in their control of others and can be too too harsh on the other hand there's also the need to find their inner authority sometimes where they don't exert any power and are bullied by others and so the creative process here is to become a guardian because you have found your your internal power this archetype is really about fearing conflict and wants to be have peace between everyone so they see all the parts and is all inclusive and become a mentor or mediator now we 
when we look back, we can see that um, uh, uh, we can see that um, the the all inclusiveness came out with uh, Matthew Fox, the. Um, Let me just get them all. Uh, Ernest Rossi was very much the scientist and um, the researcher, but also the visionary. Um, they, you can actually recognize certain people's philosophy um, by the archetype. Or the, uh, the philosophy actually spells out the archetype. And this is what I find that most people who teach or have any presentation or specific idea usually talks about one of these. So, um, uh, Clarissa Pinkola Estes is very much the, um, the creative one and uh, the joy of producing and finding creativity in expression and so you know we go we actually go through all of these um, phases of archetypal development but some of them hold particular meaning to us um, in our life as we have to learn those specific themes or we carry some of them very powerfully it is almost as if it's a spiral staircase that illustrates how we interact with various levels of experience in our life and people to learn and grow. So instead of a circle, it becomes a vast staircase of life that is a ladder we all must climb to heal socially, spiritually, physically and emotionally, becoming more empowered and wise as we grow. And we need to know where we are. We need to really get that and do a good job of learning about that particular phase of growth. And then that is the only way to grow organically without force. You are going in the right direction when you observe life from the different world views. But the particular world view a viewpoint of that particular archetype in a specific moment. Just to remind you how the spiral staircase looks, and here's another one of uh, Blake's Jacob's ladder, and I've got a little illustration of how the planets in the universe move in these spiral like fashion in different tempos so different planets uh, move slower and others faster so there's different spirals that form and this is exactly what happens internally with us that there's different parts of our life that we are experiencing the different archetypes around about so fatigue is the indication of a need of, for renewal and resilience is the resulting renewal built through the creative process. Renewal is finding the creative new, the new phase of being, the new action, the new confidence, the new whatever the archetypal process is that you are dealing with. And now I, we have come to the point of taking action. I want to challenge you with these questions. What is your intention now? And what action are you going to take to confirm and cultivate and grow your intention to its fullest expression? And that intention has to contain both the conscious and the unconscious. Thank you very much.